Today, for the first time ever, your favorite Radiant coach is sharing a sneak peek into his private coaching sessions. We're looking at an Ascendant Omen player that is hard stuck because of his poor game knowledge and extremely passive gameplay. So it's time to teach him a few big brain plays on Pearl. Tell me down in the comments if you enjoyed this type of content and leave a like to boost the YouTube's algorithm, baby. Okay, we are pushing the A set in the first round and one mistake immediately happens in the first round of Valorant. If you are playing classic pistol, you should always buy the light shield. Like when you have a classic pistol, you're already in somewhat of a disadvantage compared to the enemies that have like a, the ghost. Uh, Chamber has the headhunter and he can two tap you in the body and just demolish you, etc, etc. And whenever you're playing a classic pistol in the first round, whichever agent you're playing, you're buying a classic light shield and the most useful and important utility for that agent that you're playing. For example, right now you're playing Omen, so we're buying two smokes, two shrouded steps, and if our teammates are pushing as five men a main area of the map basically in the first round i will do the smoke here do the smoke here and i will try to close the gap with the enemies with this type of a teleport as my teammates are flashing for me and as we are pushing into the bomb site and i will basically try to you know outmaneuver the enemies take as much space control as possible maybe you can even extend your push like all the way there for an example and try to additionally like backstab the enemies and surprise them and go for a bit more risky aggressive play and another mistake that happened here is essentially whenever you're doing the omen smokes you always want to do the smokes as you're moving with your allies so if your allies are moving here you're moving with them and you're doing the smokes so when you reach this angle you're already there to support your teammates and fight with your teammates but in your case scenario your teammates were here and you're all the way here being chilling you know like you don't give a shit what your teammates are gonna do and that is very very bad and here you can see why in this specific round i would not push a site in the first round basically this wall delays your push a lot pearl is a huge map and right now the enemies can flank you all the way here all the way here take all of this map control and then if you decide to rotate maybe they're gonna surprise you and kill you maybe all of the enemies will already rotate and you're gonna end up fighting four enemies here and that is why in the first round of pearl if the enemies have a sage or this type of a team comp that can easily delay you in this small choke point there are only two options we are either splitting the site or we are pushing b like that in this example here you should not have ended up going into the bomb site by your feet man you're playing omen plus you bought the paranoia okay enemy brimstone has given you the smoke here we say that brimstone thank you man thank you for smoking me bro and allowing me to do this type of an aggressive execute i teleport here then on this position i can easily flash the enemies at the backside since you've already purchased the flash in the first round and you made a numbers advantage for your team opened up the site and your teammates are happy and now you have higher chances to win this round whenever you have a numbers advantage you should primarily use your smokes in a one-way setups to delay or to completely stop the enemy's diffusal of the spike you have a lot of these moments in your game play where you know you're very indecisive and these decisions must be much much faster listen when you're pushing this um, a site also a very good idea to do is doing some kind of a utility that is gonna stop the enemy's advance through this position here so in this example if you already have a breach in your team it is really good when you're pushing the a site especially if you're pushing it fast and you're not pushing on contact to tell your breach to maybe flash through here or do a stun through here to completely disallow the enemies to fight you in this area of the map because why would you even let the enemies take any map control here and try to surprise you it just doesn't make sense listen also a very good idea on, on pearl is uh, try to abuse the b site at the early stages of the game because in the early stages of the game enemies uh, still don't have the operator to properly defend the, the b site and uh, basically like uh, it's easier to push the b in the early stages of the game listen omen flash is the most useful flash in the game why on the attacker side omen flash will guarantee you flashing the enemies in these type of positions and clearing one specific area of the map this cannot miss there's no way that you're going to miss this corner this corner you know back of the site etc etc any other flash in the game number one it is very inconsistent like sometimes even when you flash the enemies they're not really flashed like let's be honest and second thing is that they can easily be dodged behind the walls but you get the point like uh, and it is always better if you tell your teammates to use the flashes in these main areas of the maps to push them all the way to the choke point and 
and that you're using your flash to actually push meaningful areas of the map. Whenever you notice as an omen player that your teammates are going in, try to support them as best as you can. Like here, if I saw that my neon is going in and my raise is going in, I'm going in as well. There is no reason to not use your allies' aggressive pushes to push into the bomb sites, like to use their life at the end of the day. In this round, it is not bad that you played as five men because enemies are eco and half by. They have only marshals and shuddies. You always want to contest the enemies when they are eco and half by on any map in Valorant in the long range corridors where you can abuse the economy advantage. Okay. Very good. We are pushing with a neon. Okay. I noticed that uh, also you're crouching, like, uh, you need to stop doing these uh, micro crouches. You saw the sky and you immediately done this, like, why, man? Just stand up, uh, do strafe, shoot, strafe, shoot. And then if you commit to the spray, then crouch to basically, you know, lower down the spread of your weapon and have easier time killing the sky. How aggressive should you play in this type of a post plant? You should play as aggressive as your most aggressive player is playing. Also, because it is three versus one, what is smart to do in this situation is stick to the butthole of at least one one of your teammates and make sure to play on the numbers advantage and on a refract potential. Right now, no reason for you to go art, main, to stay on the site. Play with the brimstone in this little garden area of the map there, that uh, graveyard position, or play with the neon. Listen, now in this round, we don't know where the chamber is gonna play with the ultimate. Usually he played A site in the previous round and he was aggressive towards the A main and peeking this corridor. But in this round, because you won the previous round on the B site, there is a huge chance that that chamber is going to play B and try to snipe you. And in this round, it is just way, way too dangerous to even consider contesting the enemies on B side with Omen. Like what you can do with Omen, you can cross this position like this always. And this is something that I do majority of the times when I'm pushing the B main area with Omen. And then from this position, you can easily clear all of these angles for your teammates and surprise the enemy chamber with operator. Something that I've explained to you in the previous sessions is like, uh, if some play or some strategy is working a lot of times in a row, there is no need to change it. Like, why, why would we change something that's actually working for us? It just doesn't make any sense. If this push is working out for you, you know, just keep abusing A until the end of the game and, and that's it, like, until the enemies, you know, really adapt to you. Now, in a first round on a defender side of Pearl, I'm gonna buy Frenzy with two smokes and two shroud steps and try to play here with a one-way smoke up there and, you know, try to delay the enemy's push as much as possible. Or I'm gonna play a classic pistol, shorty light shield strategy with two smokes and one shrouded step. We are picking up the shorty when the round starts and then you can maybe position the smoke like this, drop the classic to stay there and basically wait for the enemies to push you. Now let's see what you're gonna do in this first round. Ooh, you... Ooh, not bad. Just aggressing that smoke that much is kind of dangerous because players on Pearl, they really, really love to spam these doors, you know, like, and, and uh, you never know when that is going to happen and it's just too risky to play. But mm -hmm. I love that you use this strategy. Okay. Uh, one of my favorite smokes when enemies are pushing the A main area of the map is the one-way smoke right here. Basically, this is the best smoke that you can give to your teammates to basically stop the enemies' advance through the A main area of the map. With this smoke, enemies just cannot push you. End of the story. Period. But also, why is this smoke really good to do? Because in one round, where you're playing some kind of an eco or half buy. Let's say you have only a stinger, light shield, and utility. You can put this smoke a bit lower, like this, at the start of the round, to fake the one-way smoke. And then you can walk into the smoke all the way to this cubby position, let the enemies pass you and you can try to kill maybe, you know, one, two, three enemies and trade yourself for like two or three kills and allow your teammates to have higher chances of winning that eco or hull by round. Especially in this situation, can you tell me why is it bad to do this smoke in the choke point there? Correct answer is enemies have two pop flash agents. And basically, I always oh, stay away okay. from these default smokes when the enemies have too many pop flash agents. And if your team didn't have this wall here, they would have get obliterated by the pop flash smokes. And uh, whenever enemies have a heavy pop flash team composition, such as uh, Yoru, Ko, Sky, it's always better to rely on the one-way setups instead of relying on these like regular D Default Shitteronis. Okay. Once again, I just feel that uh, with Omen, you can just be a little more creative. Just a, a tiny bit, you know, like uh, maybe doing this type of a peek here. Bam, one enemy dead. Teleporting here, you have the pillar to hide your ass. Bam, second enemy dead. Bam, third enemy dead. Then we can maybe jump spot to see if enemies are taking the B main control further on and then hold this type of an angle. I just want a creativity from you and I want you to be more secretive with your positioning. 
you need to play like Pearl kind of in the same way that you're playing Split and Ascent. Like you need to do semi-aggression, taking more information, how much enemies progressed or how much map control enemies have taken from you. And that is the smart gameplay on Pearl. Like uh, just letting the enemies take this much of a map control without contesting them at, at all is not really good on Pearl. On this position as well, you have a very good one-way smoke that you can use as Omen. And this position is not bad. I love it. What I'm always trying to do is based on the timing, how much time enemies need to go from this position to this position or from this position to this position but also based on the audio i always give myself uh, this type of a uh, one-way smoke because why not you know you completely delay the enemies push there and we're all happy please for the love of god whenever you are rotating uh, whatever you're doing in valorant place your crosser at the angle and at the area of the map from which enemies can kill you at that specific moment of time right now enemy can be inside of your asshole and you know like you cannot kill him enemy can be here without any problems you don't know if all three enemies are here they were not shown on the minimap and i would basically run to this angle with my gun out looking at this position and then do the flash from here to here okay oh this is not gonna be good like uh, listen why did you do a smoke there i don't know <laughs> i don't know <laughs> listen these type of smokes in mid you should only do when your teammates are aggressing the enemies either from the art or from the mid doors like don't waste your smokes in the mid area of the map if no one from your team is aggressing the enemies there it's always better to save these smokes for the one-way setups and to delay the enemies pushes into the bomb sites you need to realize that uh, your one-way smokes and your utility is not only controlling what the enemies are doing but also what your teammates are doing and just as a reminder if you're not finding any specific usage for your ultimate in any match just use it as a early information or use it to make the pressure on the enemies like sometimes i even use my ultimate at the start of the round as a shrouded step like this why to save one of my shrouded steps for the retakes or you know like to bamboozle the enemies but also when you do the ultimate like this let's say like four seconds of the round enemies don't know where the fuck you are they need to worry about their asses they need to either play super aggressive or they're going to waste a lot of the time here here and here to actually see where the hell this omen went okay overtime intense drinking good plan here listen what do we do in this situation whenever you plan the spike in this position fuck it tell your breach man that's it like i don't know flash the sky there run run bro if you're playing b long why because whenever you have some smoke like omen or brimstone or ashra and the spike is there one way here that's it round is ours enemy cannot defuse that spike easy round like there's no reason right now to play the site or do anything like oh what are we doing here Whew. Don't, don't split away from your teammate. Yo, this was way risky, man. This was way, way, way risky, and I wouldn't recommend you to do this. Like, uh, you're just making a round 10 times harder than they should be. And when it doesn't make sense to do aggressive plays, you go for the aggressive plays. When it makes a sense to do aggressive play, like in eco rounds, half by rounds, you know, rounds where you don't have a good economy, you're like, I'm just gonna pick a sheriff and pick a long range gunfights and play a default. This is exactly the round where you need to shift your gameplay a bit. If you notice, for 12 rounds, the default was not working very great for you. Like, do some aggression. Like, maybe enemies don't know how to cope or how to react on the aggression. Like, why right now we are playing default again? No reason. Let's tell our sage. Let's take a full beam and control. Fuck it. Let's do a smoke here. Slow orb there. Flash here. Simple communication. Sage, we are pushing B long. Slow orb here. End of the story. Okay, not bad, man. Not bad. Like, definitely, I think after this session, your Pearl gameplay is gonna be 10 times better and uh, you have nothing to worry about. Thanks for watching to the end of the video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn your notifications on for some future epic content. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment to boost the YouTube's algorithm. Join my Discord server if you want to get the best Valorant coaching programs for your improvement. And down in the description below, you can find all of my other social media i'm yours one and only warden of the tricksters community thank you for watching and cut baby